This emergency surgery is yours to handle. It's simple enough that even a rookie like you should have no trouble with it. What? No way. There's no way I can handle such a difficult operation on my own. Please, Mr. Hayes, I'll assist, so you should be the lead surgeon. Mr. Hayes, who held absolute authority, was pushing an impossible task onto the rookie female doctor. What are you talking about? Speed is everything in surgery. You need to build up experience by doing more and more cases. I'm suggesting you take the lead as a favor to help you get used to surgery. This can't be. The female doctor, overwhelmed by the weight of the responsibility, was holding her head in despair. She was on the verge of being crushed by the pressure, her face pale, and her hands trembling uncontrollably. There was no way she, still inexperienced in surgery, could succeed in such a situation. Realizing I couldn't just stand by and watch, I decided to step in and take over the surgery to help her. I'll handle this surgery. The moment I, who had been hiding my true abilities for certain reasons, took over the surgery, an unexpected and dramatic turn of events began. My name is Nick Johnson. I work as a surgeon at a university hospital. The hospital stands tall in a prime district surrounded by skyscrapers and is known for offering cutting-edge medical care. Mr. Hayes, the hospital's poster boy, attracts patients from all over the country and abroad who seek his treatment. Mr. Hayes, thank you so much for performing my daughter's surgery the other day. Thanks to you, she's doing well. I'm glad to hear that. Please take care of her. Thank you so much. The patient's family bowed deeply to Mr. Hayes. To the patients, Mr. Hayes was like a god. His surgery schedule was booked solid for the next six months, making it nearly impossible to secure an appointment. I was being worked to the bone by Mr. Hayes every day, running errands like a lackey. This morning, I was once again scrambling to coordinate pre-surgery visits and surgery schedules for Mr. Hayes' patients when he hit me with another of his usual criticisms. Hey, Nick, we can schedule the surgery for the patient who was admitted yesterday three days from now. What? But Mr. Hayes, your schedule is already packed in three days. There's no room. That's your job to figure out. If you can't even manage that, just do as you're told and stop complaining. Understood. I'll make it work. You should have just said that from the start. Useless as always. Mr. Hayes' word was law. That's how things worked at this hospital. Thanks to his unreasonable demands, I had to constantly beg and negotiate with everyone around me. Each time, I faced more complaints, and my nerves were fraying by the day. While I was trying to adjust the surgery schedule, pleading with the nurses in the OR and the wards, I was hit with another round of sarcastic remarks. As I was apologizing profusely, an announcement called for all doctors to gather in the office. Oh, right, today was the day the new recruits were joining. I hurried to the office. You're late. What were you doing? Sorry. When I arrived, Mr. Hayes, the rest of the staff, and the new doctors were already gathered. Look at you, showing up later than me, a half-baked doctor. You must think you're something special now. I'm sorry. Speed is everything in surgery. If you work as slow as you do, you'll never make it. Yes sir. All right, listen up, newbies. Don't end up like him. If you're slow, you're useless in everything. Move fast, got it? Yes, sir. With one word from Mr. Hayes, my first impression with the new doctors was already in ruins. The new doctors looked at me like I was some kind of outcast. This year's group consisted of five people, 
three fresh graduates from their clinical internships and two who had transferred from other departments. There had been rumors for days that one of them was exceptionally beautiful. Her name was Emily, a transfer from the internal medicine department. And she was apparently so talented that people were already betting on her bright future. My name is Emily. I worked in internal medicine, but I transferred here because I admire Mr. Hayes. I look forward to working with you. After greeting Mr. Hayes and the other doctors with a smile, she turned her gaze towards me. But her expression clearly showed disdain, as if she were looking at a cockroach. Sure, my first impression might have been bad, but in surgery, I'm far more experienced. It's pretty rude to treat a senior like that. Just as I started getting irritated by her attitude, Mr. Hayes added more fuel to the fire. Today, after work, we're having a welcome party. All you can eat and drink at a fancy restaurant, on me. Everyone's coming. Awesome. Oh, and Nick, you're not invited. You're probably not going to show up anyway, so I didn't bother reserving a seat for you. Even if you come, there won't be any food for you. Understood. I'll pass. Thanks to Mr. Hay's unnecessary comment, everyone's eyes were suddenly on me again. Your lack of socializing is the worst. You need to be more of a team player. No wonder you don't have a girlfriend. I bet you don't even have friends, huh? Pathetic. With each word, my value in front of the new doctors dropped lower and lower. A useless loner at work, without a significant other or friends. That was now their impression of me. The new recruits will spend the next week in orientation. And Nick, you'll be in charge of it. After all, you're not much use in surgery. So you must have plenty of free time. Mr. Hayes sneered as he mocked me. In reality, I was the busiest person in the department. Mr. Hayes just dumped tasks on everyone else and did nothing himself. I wanted to yell, you're the one who's always free, but I held back. The next morning, as I was preparing early for the orientation, Emily appeared in front of me. Good morning. Looks like you stayed out pretty late last night, huh? Good morning. Yeah, but I got to hear a lot from the senior doctors. They even told me about you, Nick. They said you're just a tag along who always follows Mr. Hayes around. Hey, becoming harsh already, huh? You wander around without any skill to back it up, don't you think you're just bothering Mr. Hayes? I hate people like that. Everyone's here to learn from him, and if the most useless person in the department is lurking around, it's a nuisance for the rest of us. I was about to tell her she'd gone too far when, at the worst possible moment, Mr. Hayes walked in. What's all the commotion this early? Emily, was it? He's your senior, so it's rude to talk to him like that. He knows better than anyone how incompetent he is. Yes. You used to work in internal medicine, right? Let's see if you're cut out for surgery. Show me your hands. Emily held out her hands, and Professor Hayes examined them, pressing and rubbing her fingers to test their dexterity. Hmm, you've got good hands. I think you'll make an excellent surgeon. Thank you very much. After tossing a few more insults my way, Mr. Hayes left the room. While handling my usual tasks, I also conducted the orientation for the new doctors. After the one-week orientation, they would begin observing surgeries, the core of surgical training. I've got next week's schedule here. Do you want to take a look? It lists the procedures and the estimated times. You can choose which ones to observe and make sure to study up beforehand. I can also teach you suturing and tying techniques right away if you'd like. 
All right, please do. The new doctors reluctantly nodded. They seemed uncertain, wondering if I, after being humiliated by Mr. Hayes, could actually teach them anything. Nick, are you sure you can teach us? I mean, can you even suture properly? Suturing is the most basic skill in surgery. Did she really think there were surgeons who couldn't suture? Or was she just that determined to belittle me? In the simulation room next to the office, I explained the techniques of vascular tying and suturing in detail and demonstrated them on artificial skin. See, here, you do it like this, like this. When I skillfully sutured the soft skin, mimicking an organ, her eyes whitened in surprise. Wow, that was fast. Whoa, that's amazing. The new doctors were astonished by my technique. Was it really that surprising? Among the group, one person was intently watching my hands. Excuse me. Can you show that again? Sure, I'll start from the beginning. So here, you do this, and then like this. Ah, uh, sorry, could you show me one more time? Emily was staring at my hands with a serious gaze. I slowed down significantly, so she could follow along, but it seemed she still couldn't keep up with the speed of the technique. She tilted her head, muttering to herself with a puzzled expression. I'm a little surprised that you're more skilled than I thought. Just a little. Well, I suppose even a failure needs at least one talent to make it fair. Her completely different attitude from the surprised look she had just a moment ago made me chuckle slightly. That's another rude comment. Anyway, this is a basic technique. You should practice it until you can do it in your sleep. But, we're still just observing for now, right? You have a medical license, don't you? What if you're asked to handle a wound? You should at least be able to suture. Besides, you never know when an emergency might happen. As a doctor here, let me give you one piece of advice, never let your guard down. Always be as prepared as you can possibly be. Got it? Ha! Huh? What do you mean by that? At that moment, I was called from the ward, Dr. Johnson. So I handed the new doctors the surgery manuals and equipment guides before leaving the room. In the simulation room, with me gone, the new doctors were casually chatting as they examined the instruments curiously. Hey, I heard something from a senior the other day. What's that? This department has a super high turnover rate for new doctors. The seniors are all nice, so I wonder why that is. Then Emily spoke up, as if she knew something. I know why. It's because of Nick. Ha! Huh? Why him? That slow, useless guy keeps dumping work he can't handle onto the new doctors. Really? He seems like the nicest one, though. Don't be fooled by his appearance. I bet he's doing something shady behind the scenes. You think so? I know so. Just wait, I'll expose him for what he really is. The other new doctors exchanged uneasy glances, their faces grim as if they'd just eaten something bitter. A few days later. Emergency. Emergency. We have a cardiac arrest. The situation requires immediate surgery. Prepare the OR now. This hospital, equipped with a heliport on the roof and its own medical helicopter, frequently handled emergency calls not just for accidents and urgent conditions but also for patients from hospitals without surgery facilities. Early this morning, the emergency bells were ringing once again. Another wave of emergency patients had arrived. And it wasn't just one or two. A massive crane had fallen from a building under construction. It appeared that the surrounding buildings also collapsed, 
causing a major accident that involved a large number of people. Normally, the on-call emergency doctors would handle the surgeries, but there were far too many cases for them to manage. Mr. Hayes, reviewing the patient charts, called over the new doctors. Whom? I'll choose you. The person he pointed to was Emily. This emergency surgery is yours. It's simple enough that even a rookie like you should be able to handle it. You have a medical license, right? And experience from internal medicine? You've got this, no problem. What? No way. With the accident, there might be internal organ damage. There's no way I can handle such a difficult surgery on my own. Please. Mr. Hayes, you take the lead. What are you talking about? Speed is everything in surgery. You need to build up your experience by taking on more cases. I'm giving you this opportunity as a favor to help you get used to surgery. This is a good chance, right? This is too much. I can't do it. Can't do it? You're a doctor, aren't you? There's no such thing as rookie or expert when you're standing in front of a patient. Are you going to abandon this patient? No. I wouldn't. Just then, the other new doctors rushed over to me in a panic from the emergency department. They told me that Mr. Hayes was about to force Emily into performing a complicated surgery beyond her abilities. When I hurried to the office, there was Emily, head in her hands, being lectured by Mr. Hayes. Emily, are you okay? Nick? The Emily who usually glared at me now had tears welling up in her eyes, her lips trembling. She looked like she was about to crumble under the pressure, her face pale and her hands shaking uncontrollably. There was no way she, with so little surgical experience, could handle this situation. It was an unreasonable demand, to say the least. One wrong move, and it could result in significant harm to the patient. I made up my mind and stepped forward in front of Emily. Let me handle this. Ha! Doesn't matter who does it. If you think you can, go ahead. But if you fail, it's all on you, understand? Yes. Mr. Hayes sneered at me and left the office. Nick, I'm sorry. No, there's nothing for you to apologize for. I'll take care of the surgery. But can you assist? Think you can handle it? Yes. I'm not confident, but I'll do my best. All right, let's do this together. The surgery we undertook was incredibly difficult. The accident had caused ruptured organs, with damage spread across multiple areas. The bleeding was severe, and had we been any later, it would have been too late. Using the skills I had honed through countless sleepless nights, I steadily advanced through the procedure. Stopping the bleeding, suturing, excising damaged tissue, more suturing, then repairing the organs. With each precise move, Emily, wide-eyed with surprise, followed along as best as she could. In this high-pressure, critical situation, the two of us worked together, coordinating flawlessly, and successfully completed the emergency surgery. We managed, in part, thanks to Emily's clinical experience. Her precise use of medication and her ability to anticipate my needs without needing instruction saved precious time. Several hours later, we had successfully completed the complex operation. If it weren't for your quick, skillful handling, we definitely would have failed, Emily said. No, you did great assisting on the outside. It was a team effort, and I'm just glad the patient's okay. Nick, your surgery was truly amazing. The way you identified the bleeding points so accurately and handled everything so quickly, it was incredible. Ha, it's a bit embarrassing to be praised like that, 
especially from you. Nick, um, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. As she said this, Emily touched my arm. When I looked at her, she gazed at me with teary eyes. Wait. Is this, could it be? Just as she was about to say something, Mr. Hayes walked into the prep room at the worst possible moment. Well, good job, both of you. I'm glad the surgery was a success. There was a moment there when I wasn't sure how things would turn out. But you pull through. As usual, Nick, take care of the paperwork. Yes, sir. When I gave a straightforward response, he glanced at Emily and said, Emily, I gave you the opportunity to overcome this challenge. As a doctor, you need to take on difficult cases to advance. But after today, it's clear you're not cut out for this. You're not going to make it. With that, he left. After he was gone, Emily quietly muttered. I used to respect Mr. Hayes, but after this, my feelings have changed. I never realized he would make such unreasonable demands. He calls it a challenging case, but there was no way I could have handled that surgery as a rookie. Yeah. I agree. By the way, Nick, what did he mean by as usual with the paperwork? I took a swig of my canned coffee and replied. It means the surgeon listed on the record will be changed from me to Mr. Hayes. What? That's falsifying the record. Her shock was understandable. The surgery I performed would now have Mr. Hayes listed as the lead surgeon instead of me. In reality, something like this should never be allowed. If it ever became public, it would be considered tampering with the surgical records. The truth is, Mr. Hayes rarely performs difficult surgeries. He avoids taking on high-risk operations because a failure would tarnish his reputation and damage his career. However, the number of surgeries cannot be reduced. That's why Mr. Hayes takes credit when younger doctors succeed in difficult surgeries. On the other hand, if the surgery fails, the young doctors bear all the blame. The medical staff are just pawns for Mr. Hayes, nothing more than scapegoats. So, if I had taken on this surgery and failed, I think he wanted you to fail. Either you'd get discouraged and return to internal medicine, or he'd use it to hold something over you. Either way, it'd work out for him. That's terrible. Yeah, our department is known for crushing young doctors. Mr. Hayes has ruined many careers like this. He just sees young doctors as convenient tools. That's why the turnover rate for new hires is so high. So, the rumors were true. I once confronted Mr. Hayes about this. I asked him to stop, but he threatened me. He said, What would happen to this hospital without me as its figurehead? It was obvious chaos would follow and I worried about what would happen to the staff and patients. So, I decided to endure it, thinking it was better if I just put up with it. Nick. I. I misunderstood everything. Emily listened to my story in shock. Then she slowly began to explain why she had transferred to surgery. The truth is, my mother raised me as a single mom. I barely managed to get my medical license with scholarships. And just as I thought things were finally starting to go well, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. The tumor was large. And it was so entangled with other tissues that they said surgery would be difficult. Desperate. I turned to Mr. Hayes and had my mother admitted to this hospital. But it was you, Nick who volunteered for that difficult surgery. I thought Mr. Hayes was going to perform the surgery, so I couldn't understand why you stepped in. I couldn't believe it after everything I went through to transfer my mom. Oh, I'm sorry about that. 
The truth is, even back then, all the difficult surgeries were being forced onto younger doctors like me. I was just one of many. I see. I couldn't believe you succeeded with such a tough surgery, so I secretly checked my mother's chart. That's when I saw that Mr. Hayes, not you, was listed as the surgeon. I thought maybe you didn't perform the surgery at all, and that Mr. Hayes had to cover for you. I started thinking you were cheating the system repeatedly that way. She looked at me seriously, watching my reaction. And before my mother was discharged, she said she saw you receiving an envelope from another patient. So I thought you volunteered for surgeries just to get money, keeping the cash for yourself and passing the surgeries to Mr. Hayes. Oh, she might have seen that. What? So, you really did accept money? Of course not. That envelope was meant for Mr. Hayes. I didn't even check what was inside, but I'm sure it was money, a thick wad. Enough to make the envelope stand upright. So, Mr. Hayes regularly accepts large sums of money from patients? Not just patients. He's involved in purchasing expensive medical equipment too. Money flows from those deals as well. And it's used for bribes or extravagant parties. That's why I never attend our department's parties. If I ate and drank using dirty money, I'd be complicit in the crime. Taking money from patients and suppliers, crushing new doctors, stealing credit for their successes, even harassment and abuse. The list of Mr. Hayes' wrongdoings goes on. I can't believe Mr. Hayes is such a person. And to think, I was suspecting you of corruption. That's why I joined this department to expose your wrongdoings. I'm so sorry, Nick. I've made things really hard for you. From now on, I'll be more careful not to trust rumors without seeing things for myself. It seems her coldness towards me stemmed from a lot of misunderstandings. But why did you tell me all this about Mr. Hayes? Because you're his next target. Ha! Huh? Think about it. Not just this surgery, but remember after your welcome party? He held your hand in the office the next day. That's a clear case of harassment, right? And you're beautiful, you know. If you had failed the surgery, he might have blackmailed you. Saying he'd cover it up if you did what he wanted. Ugh, that's disgusting. She imagined the worst-case scenario, her face turning pale. What a horrible man. Nick. Are you just going to leave things as they are? No, I know this can't go on forever. But, like Mr. Hayes said, this hospital practically runs on him. When I think about that. But if you let him continue unchecked, there won't be any future doctors left. That's going to cause an even bigger disaster for healthcare. Don't you think? I believe you can change things, Nick, you saved me, even without thinking of yourself. Do you really think so? Yes. You've been watching Mr. Hayes closely, haven't you? To protect people like me, right? Even though you've been enduring his abuse. I believe you can do this, Nick. I'll help with whatever you need, so... The truth is, I already had a plan to expose Mr. Hayes' wrongdoings. It's a risky move. Are you sure you're ready? Absolutely. All right, then. Let's do this. Emily and I shook hands firmly. About a month later, the hospital brought in a newly developed, state-of-the-art surgical navigation system. Mr. Hayes was planning a big demonstration for it. Many doctors from outside the hospital would attend, so I was busy preparing for the event. Nick, how's the demo prep going? Everything's on track. 
Here's the schedule and the demo script. All right. I'm counting on you. Yes, understood. On the day of the demonstration, famous doctors from all over the country gathered at the hospital. Mr. Hayes, the darling of the surgical society, had an unparalleled reputation. But all of that glory ends today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for the demonstration of the latest surgical navigation system. The massive screen, as large as one you'd find in a theater, displayed the images. Like a CEO of a major corporation, Mr. Hayes strode onto the stage. Now, the real reckoning begins. After promotional footage of the latest equipment played on the giant screen, the small camera connected to the device began broadcasting Mr. Hayes's hands as he worked. As the mock surgery progressed according to the simulation, the navigation system's alarm suddenly blared loudly. Vascular injury detected. Vascular injury detected. Please stop the bleeding immediately. Bleeding uncontrolled. Bleeding uncontrolled. Blood pressure dropping. Blood pressure dropping. Administer vasopressors. The alerts grew louder and the warning sounds intensified. The data on the monitor and the EKG readings worsened, signaling that the surgery had failed spectacularly. Nick, what's going on? Turn off the alarm. Mr. Hayes shouted my name in a panic. Yes, I'm sorry. I'll take care of it immediately. Hurry up. As Mr. Hayes continued to shout in desperation, someone in the crowd muttered softly. Hey, isn't this clearly a surgical error? Yeah, it was a pretty basic procedure, wasn't it? Does Mr. Hayes even operate regularly? Even I wouldn't make such a rookie mistake. The murmurs in the crowd gradually grew louder, and Mr. Hayes's face became visibly paler. Now, it was my turn to act. My deepest apologies. Since recovering the device is difficult at this time, I will now take over as the demonstrator and continue with the operation demonstration. Nick, you bastard. What are you saying? Mr. Hayes, this is a public event. I believe it's more important to regain control of the situation first. Damn it! Mr. Hayes stepped down from the stage with a face full of frustration. I took over as the demonstrator and resumed the mock surgery. With precise steps, I performed the necessary actions, stopping the bleeding, tying off the vessels, and removing the tumor. Soon enough, the navigation system's alerts went silent. Blood pressure stabilized. Bleeding stopped. Tumor successfully removed. All vitals are normal. Proceed to closure. Voices of admiration echoed from the audience. That doctor's incredible. His technique is flawless. Yeah, it's no comparison to Mr. Hayes. The room filled with applause as the demonstration concluded. It was my complete victory. In truth, the scenario I had given to Mr. Hayes and the procedure programmed into the machine were entirely different. In other words, I had intentionally set it up so that Mr. Hayes would fail. Any surgeon who regularly operated would have noticed the subtle differences and adjusted during the procedure. But Mr. Hayes couldn't. It was his own fault for neglecting his practice all this time. As the audience began to leave the room, Mr. Hayes, who had been waiting backstage, stormed towards me, furious. Nick, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm just stating the facts, Mr. Hayes. You made an unexpected mistake, and I couldn't clear the alarm because of it. What? You're mocking me, aren't you? Mr. Hayes, unable to contain his anger, 
grabbed my collar and raised his fist, ready to strike. Help! Mr. Hayes is assaulting a staff member. Emily's scream echoed, and security guards rushed over, followed by a group of people. Mr. Hayes, what do you have to say about this failure? The group that arrived was led by the hospital's director, Dr. Anderson, and his entourage. Dr. Anderson. This is all because Nick messed up the settings. No, that's not true. It's obvious this was your mistake. Even I can tell that. It was an elementary error, something even a beginner wouldn't make. There's no way you've been handling the high-level surgeries you claim. I'll have the surgical department and OR records audited immediately to see if any records have been altered. No, it can't be. From there, the hospital auditors launched an investigation, and one by one, Mr. Hayes's wrongdoings were uncovered. Of course, I provided them with the mountain of records and data I had been keeping all this time. As a result, Mr. Hayes was dismissed and stripped of his title. He was placed on indefinite house arrest. Meanwhile, the doctors who had suffered under him formed a victim's association. Mr. Hayes ended up facing dozens of lawsuits. As for me, I was called in by Dr. Anderson after the whole ordeal. Impressed by my track record and my performance during the demonstration, he offered me the position of the next professor. It was a generous and flattering offer. Emily, on the other hand, seemed to have mixed feelings after everything that happened. She ultimately decided that surgery wasn't for her and returned to internal medicine. The internal medicine professor, who had always admired her talent, welcomed her back without hesitation. Hey Emily, long time no see. How are things going? Nick, perfect timing. Do you have some free time today? Hmm, yeah, I think I'm free. Great. There's the seafood restaurant I've been dying to try. How about joining me for a drink? The restaurant, located in a high-rise, was bustling, and I enjoyed some great drinks with her. Back when I was under Mr. Hayes, I always refrained from drinking, ready to jump into surgery at any moment to help the younger doctors. I'd endured being belittled and played the fool for the sake of my colleagues and patients. Looking back, I'm surprised I didn't break under the pressure. By the way, I got a letter from Mr. Hayes. What? What did he say? Apparently, during his house arrest, he had a lot of time to think. He wrote that he developed a fear of surgery after a failed operation in his early career. Even though he used to be a decent surgeon, the pressure from those around him became so intense that he couldn't admit his fear. That doesn't justify committing crimes. You're right. But he said that if he ever got the chance to treat patients again, he'd do it properly this time. Poof. But it's unlikely he'll ever return, right? That depends on the outcome of the lawsuits. If he's found guilty and faces criminal charges, his medical license could be revoked. I see. Emily's voice was still tinged with anger, clearly, she hadn't forgiven him yet. By the way, Nick. You're still single, right? Do you have anyone special in your life? Ha! Huh? You know exactly what kind of environment I've been in. How can you ask if I have a girlfriend? That sounds like sarcasm. So, that's a no? Then, Nick, can I nominate myself to be your girlfriend? Wait, what? I think we get along pretty well. And didn't you once call me beautiful? Did I say that? You did. Honestly, I'd always liked her, and after she left the department, I realized I missed her. So, I decided to go with the flow and accept my fate. That's how we started dating, and two years later, we got married. 
Despite our busy schedules, we find time for each other and manage to stay close. After I became a professor, the department settled down. The turnover rate for new hires dropped significantly. Looking back, all the struggles and hardships were worth it. Even when you're working hard to achieve good results, things don't always go your way, and sometimes, you face disastrous outcomes. There were many moments when I doubted myself, thinking I wasn't cut out for this career and considering quitting altogether. In the end, I came to believe that results are everything, and without them, all your efforts might feel meaningless. After one surgery didn't go well and I was feeling down, a patient's family member said something to me. Of course, we all wish the surgery had gone perfectly. But Dr. Johnson, you always give everything to help your patients. In the past, now. And surely in the future, you always put your patients first. No one could blame a doctor like you. Those words lifted my spirits. And it made me realize something. In this world, results aren't everything. The effort and dedication you put in along the way shape who you are. Even if the outcome isn't what you hoped for, the hard work leading up to it is never wasted. No matter what results may come in the future, I want to live in a way where I can confidently affirm myself, never forgetting to keep trying.